praise the Lord, praise the Lord, and welcome. I'm the co-host here with the host here, and Pastor Lupe, and we also have Pastor Choi here, and this is Line in the Sand. That's right, and we have a very powerful teaching for you. And you know what? I'm just going to start it off with a little, just a little bit of nuggets here. Do you know him? I know we say it at the end, of the, at near the end, but I want to ask you, do you know him in an intimate way? Not just his name. You know, the Bible tells us, and I believe it's uh, uh, Pastor Troy, uh, Pastor Lupe, in Matthew chapter 6, I believe it is, where he talks about signs and wonders and people saying this in his name. I did this in your name. I did this in your name. I did this in your name. And he looks at them and says, I never knew you. Wow. Wow. This is powerful. And you know, we see all around social media, prophecy, signs and wonders, you know, uh, uh, things happening. Uh, uh, what did they say? Uh, gold showing up. But what is the bottom line? Do you know him? Do you really know him? Saints, we're living in a time that we chase after things, but not chasing after him. Yes, and, and, and one last thing I'm going to say, and, uh, I, and I'm going to let uh, Pastor Lupe, you know, take it from here. We read this in the book of John, where Jesus looks at his disciples, mm -hmm. and it was towards the end of his ministry, not in the beginning. In the beginning of his ministry, he called them apostles. So you can be an apostle, but they still didn't know Jesus. But they, he called them what? Apostles. And at the end, towards the end of his ministry, it's when he says, you're not servants anymore. You're my friend. Right. You're my friend. So you can be called a bishop, an apostle, a pastor, a prophet, and still not know him. Mm. Yes. Woo! Oh, that's scary. He called them <laughs> friends. And I want to hear the word from Jesus. Manuel, my friend, like Abraham, wasn't just a man of faith. He was also called the friend of God. So I know there was intimacy relationships there where the two became close. Yes. Lupe. I'm of a mind that when you get to know someone, mm. when you really know, like husband and wife, mm -hmm. you, you know each other. You right. finish, finish each other's sentences, right? Mm -hmm. You know what, before you ask the question, you know what the answer is going to be. That's how well, and why is that? Because you spend so much time together. You spend not only, you know, talking, you spend intimate time together. Say that again. The intimate time. That's, that's a big deal for God. Mm -hmm. And not, a, not, not enough of us do it. I know I'm, I'm going to raise my hand, you know. But when I do spend that intimate time with God, it says, uh, Jeremiah 33 and 3, is it's coming to me and I will show you things that, I didn't, that you didn't know, that you know not. Mm -hmm. All these mysteries, all this revelation. Come on. All, all this understanding. Come on. Comes from him. Mm -hmm. And if you're not spending your time with him, then you really don't know him. That's why he said that. Yes. Get away from me, you workers of iniquity. I never, never knew, you. knew you. That that means that they didn't know him. Pastor Lupe, Pastor Troy, help me with this. And I know the answer, but I know the viewers want to hear this. Are we the bride or are we supposed to be the bride? We are supposed to be the bride. Now, if you're going to, we're the bride and he's the, Jesus is the groom. Well, I don't think Jesus wants to marry someone he doesn't know. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Male order bride? <laughs> well, uh, well what the Lord is trying to get the body to right now is that we are in the last days. We are in the end of time. It is time for wise servants to buy oil. All right? Mm. So what I want to talk to is the wise uh, virgins that are going to buy the oil for their lamps. Mm. And it doesn't matter how long it takes for him to come. 
it's time to buy oil, is what I will tell you. And what it is is that the Bible talks about that we should know by 30, 60, or 100-fold as far as our fruit bearing is concerned. What the Lord has given me is that a lot of ministry and a lot of things that we do is about Christ. Come on. Or it's for Christ. Hmm. But what the Lord is looking for is he's looking for us to bear fruit in Christ. And so you would be able to weigh and measure a lot of ministry by are they doing it for the Lord or is it about the Lord, but is it in In the the Lord? Lord. Mm -hmm. Did the Lord initiate it or is it initiated by the soul of man, by our will or by God's will? Are we entering in to hear his word and the soda or the counsel of his will, like we were talking about last, last time that we were here, or are we doing our own thing? Because the verse that you gave, Matthew 7, 21, says, depart from me, you that work iniquity, you that are a doer of your own thing. And so mm-hmm. what the thing is, is that you can prophesy out mm-hmm. of the gift ability. You can re- heal out of a gift ability. But did he initiate it? Did he call you to do it at that moment? And so one of the things that I like to share is that what we find in Colossians is that in him is hid all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. In him is hid the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. Okay? And what are we we going to be judged by fire at the last days? Gold, silver, or precious stones. Did we get to the treasure? All right? If you're doing it about Christ and for Christ, it's not in the treasures of him. It's not bringing out and drawing out the treasure of him. That's good. Because he is the pearl of great price. Okay? And so knowing the Lord is what I want to talk to us about to come into bridal council and to come into the intimacy of him. Because you know the Lord through several mechanisms that most of the body of Christ are not aware of. The first one is going to be prayer and spending time intimately in his presence Mm. to where he begins to manifest in you, around you, and through you, and his light infuses into you, and you become transformed in his presence. Let let me... Yes. uh, Let me put that in a way where I can understand it. Okay. Sure. Okay. We're talking about intimate time, spending in prayer and in yes. the word. Yes. And we do that so much so where we start to die to ourselves, oh, to our opinions, yeah, to right. our judgments, to what we think we know. Yes. Because he starts to grow inside of us, like almost like a baby. You know, it's, it's, it starts to get so much so, like with me, for instance, there are a lot of things I don't do anymore because he lives in me. Mm-hmm. And I have allowed him more space in me and mm-hmm. more space in me until it's all him and none of me. Mm. Right. All him. You, 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 you uh, hear songs that say, more of you, Jesus, more of you, Jesus. I change the lyrics. I say, all of you, Jesus, none of me, Jesus. Yeah. I think that's what you were. Yeah, just uh, like that's it says my in John, interpretation John 3, he must increase as we and decrease. I must decrease. And what I must decrease from is self. Uh, the revelation of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, the self-life. It must be crucified and I must take up my cross daily in order to crucify self so that it is not my will be done, but it is your will be done, Lord. Mm. Amen. The other part about knowing him is he talks about in John chapter 6, something that's very, very powerful, but I don't think most people have caught it. He said that his blood and, his, and he as the bread is our life. Mm-hmm. is our very, very life. If you do not eat my flesh and drink my blood, you have no life in you. He says in John six fifty three, whosoever eats of my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up in the last day. Mm. Now, what he says in 56 is this, he that eats my flesh and drinks my blood 
dwells in me and I in him. And what it is is it's DNA transference, Come on. the same as sexual relationships yep. between husband and wife, which Paul part. spoke about in Ephesians Amen. chapter 5. This is a great mystery for I speak as concerning Christ and his church. So it is his DNA and his life actually infusing into mm -hmm. us. Then he makes a startling statement that many people have never sought, saw in 57. He says, as the living Father has sent me, mm. and I live by the Father. And I live by the Father. So he that eats of me shall also live by me. Shall live by me. Then we have Galatians 2.20. It is no longer I that live, but it is Christ, Christ who lives in me. The life I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. So it is that life. But then we also find another one. So we find prayer and intimacy with the Lord. Mm -hmm. We find infusing of his DNA and life in us through communion. But then it also says in John chapter 14, if you are obedient to my word, mm -hmm. then I and my father will make our abode with you. We will come and sup with you. Mm -hmm. We will make our relationship. That's right. And we will That's abide what it says. That's what Amen. it says. So those are three levels of knowing the Lord that are what is on the father's heart right now in yes. the counsel of his will for his people. Right. So that we're not distracted by what's going on around us and in the earth. But we are deeply committed to him and buying our oil in the time of night and darkness that is upon the earth right now. And we are keeping our watches in prayer and in season because it's night out there. And you don't want the darkness that is out in the world right now to come into you. So we must keep our watches, and he is the light of the world, and he is the light of our life. Now, plug that in, what you just said, mm -hmm. to what's going on now in government with all these laws that are being passed, these mm -hmm. laws that, they're laws against humanity. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to leave it at that. Laws against humanity. Okay. Laws against it's you you talked about it's dark out there now yes it's dark and it's we're the only light really right out there what you just said i want you to plug it into that okay well remember that it says in isaiah chapter 60 arise and shine for your light has come for behold a darkness shall cover the earth and a gross darkness its people but the glory of the Lord shall arise in you. His glory mm, shall be upon you. That's thin. what I'm talking about. Right. I'm talking about getting the light in you in the darkness of these times mm. that we're in right now. Mm. Yes. Mm. And what we were talking about before on other broadcasts mm. about the redemption wave, and I was saying that people didn't understand it. It's the Lord redeeming the bride of Christ and the remnant to himself. Okay, and it's going to be a revival, but it's going to also be a revival of those that will be the remnant that will come into the highest places of the Lord. Because there's an outer court, there's an inner court, and there is a holy of holies in which you enter into manifested God, the Son of God mm -hmm. and also sonship in the Lord and the bridal counsels of <clears throat> being the bride of the Lord. Mm. The, speaking of the holy of holies, and we know that's when there's like that communication. Mm -hmm. But when we read in the, the book of Leviticus and Numbers, we see that when the high priest entered it uh, once a year for his sins and the sins of others, but still he wasn't speaking, God was speaking. But when Moses entered his tabernacle, yes. they both was communicating. Mm -hmm. And I'd like you to expand on that because this is wonderful, the communion that God is looking for. Right. And you couldn't speak on it unless you have it. Right. right. Unless you've entered, unless you walk Amen. in it. Well, right. I am walking in a measure of it, and yet the Lord himself is demanding more of me on a daily basis. Wow. And you feel the tugging it's of now the spirit. the count the cost phase mm -hmm. of, you know, deciding, is that what I want? And yet it is what he is commanding and demanding of me, but I have a will. So not my will be done, Lord, but your will be done. So it demands more of my time. 
come on. than I've ever wanted to give. And it also is, I also can't be busied about doing things for Christ or about Christ to be in Christ. Mm. And so the Lord is calling us into the secret place of the Most High. Mm. So upon the earth, we may abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I love the way you said that God is calling us. So that invitation is to all of us. Mm -hmm. And we have to make that decision. Yes. We have to make the decision. Give. I'm going to be like Lupe. How do you simplify it to the watchers, that are those mm -hmm. that are viewing us, to where they say, it's so hard for me, Pastor Troy. It's so hard for me. How do they make that first step? Mm -hmm. Well, it's going to be you, first of all, turning to the Lord, because like I was speaking about the last time that we were here, about the image of me holding a window pane and bringing a black thing behind it so that it now shows an image and reflection. All right? When I did that, and even looking at Scripture, looking at the darkness of this time, then the Lord said to me that it was spiritual night outside. Mm. Okay, and that the liberal spirit and everything that we see is aligning itself for the beast kingdom. Okay, right now for the Antichrist kingdom. And there is Babylon that is over in Mecca of Shinar, okay, as it is called in the Bible. But there's also mystery Babylon, which is also in the Bible. And mystery ba Babylon is the United States. Mm. And what it is is that everybody coming into the liberal spirit in the oneness of a false love, false mercy, false compassion, mm. all of these, and even false hate, okay? All of these things that are bringing a union that the enemy is going to be able to step right into mm. Mm. because they already are shutting out the light persecuting you for the light and why are they going to persecute us as Christians we are going to be the only ones that say you can't go come to God any way you want to all religions do not lead to God or to heaven okay we are going to be the ones persecuted because we are going to be the ones that are going to say hold on these sins and iniquities God wants to set you free from he is not condoning lifestyles that don't bring you into his purpose and into his fullness. Mm. Okay? So mm. God does not understand the son paid the price for all of it so that we could be redeemed by him and come into his holiness and come into his fullness. What happened? You spoke earlier about the ten bridesmaids. What happened to the five? And is that the, is the, is the ten the, 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 the church? Mm -hmm. So what happened to the five? Well, the five foolish virgins did not become part of the bridal group. But they started off. But they started off. Okay. So everyone can. Okay? It's, re it's stepping your life into, do I want that? Mm -hmm. Because all Christians can be saved even by the skin of your teeth mm -hmm. and come into paradise. Right. Okay? And be in the outer court. Right. Of God. Right. Forever. You can do that. Yeah. Okay. Or you can step up even farther and come into the holy pl place and live from that level of dimension for eternity. Or you can come into the holy of holies and be part of the bride. So what do you think the church is right now? Hmm. Um, it's right now. different if, phases. If, if we would hear that cry. That trumpet sound. That it's sound. going to be some are in the holy place, some are in the holy of holies, but most. But would you say most? Most, 97%. Okay, now you're driving home. That's what I want to hear. That's a lot. Are in the outer court. And so we That's need to. That's a lot. Five minutes. That's a lot. Yeah. We have a few minutes left. And, um, we talked about a lot. We Go talked ahead. about a lot. Okay, um, and that's, that's enough to get me to even, you know, think about, examine myself. Yes, yes. We need to examine ourselves, even us as Christians. I've been a Christian for over 30 years. That's a long time for me to sit here 
in front of you all and, and say, that. I have to examine myself. I shouldn't have to be saying that, but it's a daily basis. It's on a daily basis. You wash yourself. You take a bath every day. So hopefully. <laughs> uh, but <laughs> that's the same thing with your walk with Christ. You need to be in his presence on a daily basis hmm. to wash off all the darkness. Come on. You were speaking about grace when you were talking about the five virgins. The well, ten let me virgins. clarify something about grace, okay? Yeah. Grace is not an empowerment to sin, and it is not a license. Amen. Grace is the empowerment of God to do what you cannot do out of your own strength. Amen. So he gives grace to us to be conformed into his will and into his purpose. And most of that is by spending time with him and letting him draw you in to his fullness. If you're out there and you don't know Jesus, That's it. just say the prayer. That's right. Jesus, come into my life. Jesus, forgive me of my sins. I know you are the son of God. Please help me. I am a sinner. I, I admit it. If you prayed that prayer, you're born again, and we thank God for you. And we thank God for everyone that has been with us today. And next, the next time around, we're going to continue this discussion. This is Lupe Olan for A Line in the Sand. God bless you all in Jesus' name. God bless you, everybody.